let's just say the FX market would be very happy and should be happy that it's um, basically coming to an end. Uh, the last couple of weeks um, have certainly been considered one of the quietest in many years. Um, the next couple of weeks, and, and certainly uh, we can foresee that the next six, six consecutive weeks of intense event risk and geopolitical trading um, will be the name of the game. Um, the market, uh, capital markets as a whole, should see increased volatility in liquidity, uh, which is basically being the two ingredients that have been missing over the past few weeks. Um, we have events like uh, U.S. tapering possibilities occurring in September. We have the Aussie and German elections. We have the decision on the Japanese consumption tax. Um, Prime Minister Abe and his government will be very much under the microscope there. And non-farm payrolls in early September um, should, be, uh, should lead to capital markets being uh, rather volatile. Uh, last week was basically the watershed. Uh, the market actually got to see July's FOMC minutes, uh, which gave, unfortunately, gave the market very little extra clues on whether the Fed will begin tapering um, or paring back on, on QE, their, their 85 billion a month bond buying program next month. Um, market consensus still expects the Fed to begin. However, um, Bernanke and company. Um, continue to say it's all data dependent. Uh, obviously, the global equity markets have been very anxious on, on the July FOMC meeting minutes. Um, you know, investor uncertainty has certainly been weighing on capital markets. And uh, we've certainly seen that, uh, especially in the emerging market space. Uh, the, the obvious question going forward is whether the Fed will actually curtail. And, um, you know, everybody will be looking at, at, at data itself. Uh, Friday's da data in the U.S. certainly um, has helped the emerging markets, but we've seen a lot of, um, of, um, of uh, selling of, of uh, emerging market assets, uh, people getting out of the less risky a asset space in the emerging markets. And uh, Friday's data in the U.S., um, was rather mixed. Um, we saw a rather disappointing U.S. new housing sales report. It was actually down 13% month over month, and uh, which makes the the precision of timing to taper for the Fed policymakers rather difficult. Um, even this morning's data in the U.S. Uh, U.S. consumer durable print, uh, excluding the most volatile component, which is airplanes. Uh, fell more than expected for July. Um, there was a 52% drop in the volatility airplane sector, which uh, unfortunately gave an unexpected 7.3% drop in the U.S. durable goods sector. And uh, what we've seen is that the U.S. dollar has basically given back some of its recent strength um, that uh, it, it actually uh, uh, garnered on the back of higher interest rates um, that... Uh, the Treasury market has been witnessing uh, as the U.S. yield curve actually shifted higher to uh, recent uh, uh, highs in, in, in yields. Um, obviously, the possibility of withdrawal of stimulus or cheaper money by the F Fed continues to have uh, some of a, somewhat of a negative effect on the emerging markets. Um, countries like India, Indonesia, Brazil continue to see uh, massive outflows of capital as uh, as investors have been um, dumping risk and uh, what we've seen you know the rising global interest rates have certainly dented the appeal of riskier assets and as you know investors have been shifting back to the less risky market space and one of those areas has been uh, obviously the US uh, as we've seen the US dollar certainly uh, um, appreciate against the emerging currencies and to a certain extent uh, also the euro back into the euros as um, uh, you know investors have shifted capital to the risk risking markets and by default uh, Europe is considered one of those um, but the data over the last two days um, you know the Asian force, forces have managed to uh, trade uh, a wee bit higher they've stopped the bleeding and uh, mostly on the back of, of um, 
some investors tempering their expectation that the Fed is is going to be quick to withdraw stimulus. Um, unfortunately, fundamentally, there are only a few trading cues for capital markets to take the lead from it in, in the short term. But um, as I said earlier, the next six weeks, uh, we will be peppered with um, um, certainly uh, heightened event risk and geopolitical political concerns as well. The current market space or capital markets as a whole is basically moving from theory to real possibility pricing. Um, and that's obviously been expressed by the recent surge in the dollar, uh, especially against the emerging markets, and a move higher in uh, interest rates as the US yield curve uh, shifts higher. Um, we've certainly seen equity market uh, capitulation uh, in, the, in the emerging market space. Um, that will probably continue to a certain extent. Um, obviously, everything is, is data dependent, and it really depends on what, what uh, uh, the market expects from the Fed. Um, fixed income um, sector does expect the U.S. yield curve to slightly flatten a tad. Um, you know, the Fed cannot keep their foot on the gas when, in, when the rest of the world and the, the policymakers themselves recognize it has to apply some sort of brakes uh, some ways away. Um, the problem with the current yield curve in the U.S. is that uh, the long end of the U.S. curve interest rates are um, too high. Uh, you know, interest rate hikes are priced in too aggressively. And um, the Fed has been trying to temper that to a certain extent. So we'll probably see the um, the interest rate curve in the long end and the curve as a whole flatten uh, a tad. Um, investors continue to expect the euro to remain in the underperformance category um, as uh, U.S. yield advantage is set to um, uh, trump the persistently low ECB rate environment. And the same can be said in, in the U.K. market as well. Um, at the moment, the market uh, seems somewhat happy to sell euros and market rallies. Um, what is interesting, though, is, is the um, uh, weaker expectations for a change in Fed policy is currently uh, supporting the price of gold. Um, the gold market and uh, gold-sensitive currencies um, have um, – there was a slight disconnect over the last little while, but um, – Overnight, we have seen the yellow metal um, finally manage to push through the uh, 1400 psychological barrier. Uh, it's certainly the highest print that anybody's seen in almost three months. Um, and it's certainly putting the commodity um, market within striking distance of, of bull market territory. Um, and that's because of the combination of weaker U.S. data and geopolitical tensions that certainly uh, help to boost commodity prices. Um, Gold has managed to rally 19% since last June, and uh, technically, uh, the technicians will tell you that uh, it's just 1% shy from a market uh, uh, about to declare itself in a bull market territory. Um, what the market can see is, uh, you know, commodity sensitive currencies like the Canadian dollar and the Aussie dollar, uh, which, as I mentioned earlier, have been trading with a slight disconnect to commodity prices. Um, we probably will see the uh, the commodity market having more of an influence on their prices, and we certainly have seen that this morning, where the Canadian dollar has actually managed to uh, trade uh, actually away from its recent uh, lows against the U.S. dollar out outright. Overall, I, capital markets needs to keep an eye on the emerging market stratosphere. They need to keep a uh, certainly a close eye on money flows, um, potentially uh, leaving the region. Um, at the moment, investors have been uh, somewhat ignoring the stabilization data out of China. And uh, will will uh, the market uh, actually declare uh, the bubble bursting in countries like in India? Um, people are, are uh, certainly... Uh, apprehensive on, on what the Reserve Bank of, say, Indonesia and India are currently doing to support their own currencies. Um, we've currently seen record lows outright over the last little while uh, because of investors exiting both the equity and bond, their bond positions in these emerging markets into safer assets. 
So the next few weeks will certainly be very volatile and uh, volume should pick up in the FX space. Uh, and uh, what we will see at the end of two weeks and the first week of September will be non-farm payrolls. Um, obviously, this is uh, will have a huge influence on, on, on the Fed. It, the Fed has basically come out and said this is one of the most important indicators uh, for uh, uh, strength uh, in the U.S. And um, the market uh, will be, um, any reporting that we see in non-farm payrolls will be uh, a rather contentious economic event for the remainder of the year. Um, and uh, in Europe, um, the theme will remain lower for longer in both uh, the, the, from the ECB and the Bank of England. And uh, that will be the recurring theme. So uh, the market, to a certain extent, will continue to be playing the interest rate differential um, and uh, obviously higher rates uh, will support the U.S. dollar. So at the moment, despite the uh, um, weak reports that we've seen both on Friday and earlier this morning, um, the theme of a stronger dollar should somewhat persist, um, but obviously the event risk and geopolitical tensions uh, will certainly dictate that over the next six weeks.